Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another great episode of Bahrain Now, your source of local initiatives, happenings, talents, and trends. I'm your host, Khalid Hijris, here to walk you through our exciting lineup of segments and personalities from around the Kingdom of Bahrain. So don't go away, we'll be right back. STEAM, where S stands for science, T for technology, E for engineering, A for arts, M for mathematics, is a project designed by El Iman Private School in order for students to use and implement those different skills, learn to come up with different innovations. Three of the students who participated in this challenging project are here with us in the studio today. Mohammed El Jalahma, Mohammed Khalid, and Khalid Al Kawari. Hello guys and welcome today to the studio. Thank you, I, I really appreciate it. So we really appreciate you guys being here. And to begin, I'd, I'd like to congratulate you guys on this amazing work. Could you guys tell us a little bit about these projects? So um, as it is uh, seen here, my project, or let's say our project represents the problem faced by the beloved Kingdom of Bahrain in producing a renewable and non-polluting energy for the environment, for us. Uh, so that the electrical energy is produced from the sunlight. Amazing, and you know, I can really see the inspiration, especially with the little studio get up here with the, with the yeah. stadium. Yeah, And course. I really like how the AstroTurf has also been used to give it that grassy feel. And why did you guys come up with this kind of theme specifically? Uh, I saw this idea in, uh, in the World Cup 2022. So I said that why don't we do it here in Bahrain? especially that there is no difference in weather conditions between Qatar and Bahrain. Then I, I just say to my friends and, say, and said, let's do it. That's how it comes. I like that, that you guys yeah. took like an actual real world situation and then you applied yeah. it to Bahrain. And you know, you're showing that it can be done. Like you said, a very similar climate so we can actually put it to work and you guys have shown that it is possible. And I'm, I'm sure with something like this, you do face a few challenges. Could you tell us about what some of those challenges were? So uh, some of the challenges that my group mates and I faced is uh, finding the components necessary to build this project. Because as you can see, we had to look all over Bahrain to find a, a solar panel that is activated through the, uh, through the photo sensors that are built inside of it. So that is one of the main challenges that we faced during uh, our uh, project building assignment. Yeah, but well, you guys actually managed to make everything work, and um, I do commend you guys on that. Uh, and how long did this take? Uh, it takes for about two months to complete this project, but there was a challenge, like working in a team uh, on such a project is a challenge that we have um, successfully overcome with the help of all team members and our teachers. This was my biggest fears at the beginning, but after that, when I re realized that it was very easy to overcome this challenge. And where do you guys see this project going? Where do you see it being implemented beyond a project board? Uh, I think this project can be here in Bahrain uh, because, uh, because the unlimited support from the King Hamad and his, and his crown prince, Sheikh Salman. And this project also can uh, Will, uh, will, will solve the big problem of the air pollution and uh, the money that we are paying for this stadium every day. This will make, this will, if our calculations are uh, correct, this uh, stadium are going to operate entirely with this solar power. So this will save a lot of money for the country. Hopefully, hopefully, and we do look forward to, I mean, green energy is the way forward for the future. Uh, is, now, speaking of thanks, is there anybody that you guys really want to thank in particular? Uh, we would like to thank our teachers uh, in the Aliman School. A lot of them helped us to f where to find these components. For example, I have uh, my mathematics teacher. He told me about the governmental website EWA. Uh, I managed to calculate how much uh, is the daily average uh, electric cost uh, the household uh, uh, uses. And we also have uh, other teachers, as, uh, such as my English teacher, for helping me prepare uh, um, our speech, my Arabic teacher, and the uh, Arabic component that we had uh, a month ago. So it was really a lot of our teachers who came forward and went way beyond what uh, was asked for them. So I'm really thankful for our teachers. Well, it looks like you guys have an amazing team backing you up. And I also want to ask you guys, like, each one of you, 
Is there anything very specific that you learned from doing this project that you didn't know before? So we have learned a lot from this project, such as using, uh, let's say, the solar energy in our future plans or in our future, uh, let's say, projects in many different ways. So not just keeping it on stadiums or whatever, like um, doing a lot of new things and uh, try a lot of things by this uh, new piece of technology that is called the solar energy. Yes, and uh, I learned how to, how to manage my team and how to communicate with others. And also another scientific information that I wouldn't know if I hadn't worked on this project. Uh, so the thing that I learned most uh, while, negoti while working on this project is that uh, we really know the importance of team building and teamwork. For my project, uh, for my team I mean, had a special case of switching roles a lot. For example, uh, right now I'm the leader of uh, my group, but before it wasn't even me. So of course we managed to compromise with each other and find who's suitable for each role. So that really helped me like really think that uh, this project needs to have everyone take the part in it and uh, take the part that is suitable for them, not the part that they want. I think that that's always very important, understanding how to delegate roles in the same way that you would delegate the purpose of something, particularly each component that goes into making such intricate projects, really. Um, is there anything yeah. you guys want to add before we conclude? Um, I just want to add that the idea of our project is based on the idea of the solar panels and how they work. Um, and uh, it's not just solar panels uh, are located on the windows. No, it's uh, a matter of thinking with a team. Uh, I would like to add that uh, my project, that uh, my, our projects do not have just a, the, it doesn't just help the environment, it can actually benefit the person itself. So because a lot of people do not want to implement solar energy and solar panels because of the high costs of it, of course. But uh, with the help of the governmental uh, website, EWA, we managed to calculate uh, through, through the average cost of, uh, the average cost of uh, ACs, fridges, and all that uh, electronic stuff that uses power, that around if we implement the project in a year, in a year and a few months, that the person will actually some, see some benefits to his overall electric bill and even water bill uh, by using uh, uh, the solar panels. I think it's amazing that these projects have given you such a, a great insight into how the world is because it, it seems to be very multifaceted. It takes a bit of everything from energy to, to costs um, and, and even construction. So, I mean, really, it does live up to the whole STEAM acronym, doesn't it? Well, I'd like to congratulate you guys again and thank you very much for joining us. And I look forward to seeing what you guys will do next thank in the you future. Very much. Thank, thank you. you. We're really yeah, appreciate it. Of course, anytime. Thank you guys so much. Viewers, so as you can see, the youth of Bahrain have a lot of promising innovations coming up, so stay tuned and we'll be right back for more. Viewers, now with what's happening outside of the studio, as the Italian Embassy hosts a special evening reception to celebrate its National Day, let's check out the following report. The Italian Embassy in Bahrain held a reception on Thursday, the 1st of June 2023 at the Donna Hall Gulf Convention Center in order to celebrate the occasion of the Italian National Day. Italian-Bahraini relations uh, are marked by a continuous success. Our relations are uh, growing, uh, deepening, uh, political relations, but also uh, economic, uh, trade, uh, culture, uh, academic uh, relations. So there is a lot of work to do. Uh, we are ready and uh, it is a true pleasure to work here in Bahrain and contribute to increase our relations.
Reuters, let's check out how the Filipino community celebrated its Independence Day in the following report. The Philippines Embassy in Bahrain celebrates its Independence Day with a series of events which started with Pinoy that took place in Danamol. We are here at Danamol today. This is the first of a series of activities being held this June to commemorate the 125th anniversary of the proclamation of Philippine independence. So what we have today here is the Pinoy Independence Day Festival. This is organized by Brad Sink, an events company, in partnership with Lulu. And we are thankful to both for organizing this event. So we are celebrating 125 years of Philippine freedom and nationhood. It actually falls on the actual date of June 12th every year, but there are many groups, the embassy, the Filipino community organizations, and several partners that are celebrating and holding events uh, throughout the full month, including the last day of June, June 30th. So we are very pleased to bring these commemorative activities to the Kingdom of Bahrain, and this year also we are celebrating 45 years of diplomatic relations between the Philippines and the Kingdom of Bahrain. And through these commemorative activities, we are promoting awareness and better understanding of Philippine culture, history, and the arts. And I think this will also showcase the deep engagement between the Philippines and the Kingdom of Bahrain and our deep ties and partnership. So thank you very much. This is basically a kickoff festival of our 125th Independence Day. Uh, as a company, actually, it is uh, our commitment to uplift the image of the Filipinos. So through these festivals, we are able to bring together food, fashion, culture, and tradition, basically. So out of the 56,000 Filipinos in Bahrain, we are always happy to celebrate uh, festivities like this and, you know, being together, the family and the friends, to be together in a, in a place place like this is such a celebration for all of us. We're participating in the Filipino Independence Day event uh, because the culture is so integrated with the Dragon Ball racing community. So for us, from being so far away from home, it allows us to build a family, not just a team, and come together and celebrate the independence of not only their country, but them being able to celebrate their independence themselves independently. Um, it's a great community to be in and an opportunity to share our backgrounds, our cultures, and also the heritage of the profession that individuals have had in the past, uh, like the fishermen and the boatmen in the Philippines, so it all comes together uh, in a culmination for this event. So, uh, welcome everyone to come out. It doesn't matter the background, so this is a celebration of the Filipino community, but we have uh, individuals from the Philippines, America, India, local in Bahrain, so everyone is welcome. I'm uh, pretty new to Bahrain, been here about nine months. Um, gotta say, dragon boat racing has become a big part of my life. Love the community. Um, it's something you know I found out here through a friend, and it's it's awesome to have a place you know where there's people with like you know minded um, you know goals. They want to you know level up their fitness, um, accomplish something special. Um, so yeah, it's been fantastic. Terrific to be here. Gotta love the food. You know, terrific food. Um, you know, it's it's been a, a special thing to see all the talent. It's a it's a great thing for sure. We're getting a lot of attention over here. You know, uh, I think a lot of people they support dragon boat racing. It's a big thing in the region. Um, and you know, hard team. We uh, we we put ourselves out there, and, and we're always willing to get you know new members. And we love training new people. So yeah, we love it. Logos Hope, the world's largest floating book fair, has arrived the kingdom. 
Many may remember the previous visit in Manama in 2013, when around 51,000 visitors were welcomed up the gangways. It's an inspirational event uh, today, being on the ship, um, manned by you know over 300 volunteers from from all over the world. I think this is by itself uh, a very impressive. Um, experience just to see all these people from you know countries as far as Latin America, Asia, Europe, uh, Africa coming together in this effort to bring uh, books around the world, to ship books around the world um, and, and thereby to um, to create an intellectual exchange with all the countries where they where they uh, get to port. So, um, you know, really a beautiful experience. I'm very glad that uh, the ship uh, has come to Bahrain. I'll certainly come back with my with my family in the next couple of days. Um, and I'm um, uh, very, uh, you know, looking looking forward to see many people from Bahrain uh, making, um, you know, using this offer, uh, coming here, looking at the books, buying books at very cheap prices. Um, and thereby getting, um, being, becoming part of this uh, worldwide experiment. Visitors to Logos Hope are offered an expanded selection of over 5,000 different titles of books at affordable prices. They cover a wide range of subjects, including science, sports, hobbies, cookery, arts, medicine, languages, and faith with children's titles, academic texts, dictionaries, and more. It's an, an amazing experience to be here on the Logos Hope. It's an amazing and the biggest uh, book fair on the water, uh, which returned first time uh, the Logos Hope visited us in 2013. It was also amazing, but this time it's uh, an inspiration. And one of the most important thing about this place is that uh, Logos Hope bring the help and hope uh, for every country uh, during knowledge, you know, like during this time, and um, they bring knowledge and inspiration and also culture because on the Lucas Hope there are so many different nationalities and each time it's like visiting this place it's like you know you are just inside an inspirational community uh, which also the most important bring uh, culture and knowledge. We're looking forward to welcome the people of Bahrain uh, and the neighbors uh, on board Logos Hope and uh, we hope this will be a teamwork. Uh, we hope this will also have a good impact on the tourism of Bahrain and people will visit not only the ship but also uh, Bahrain and uh, the touristic attractions. Logos Hope is open to the public at Khalifa bin Salman port operated by APM Terminals Bahrain from the 7th to the 18th of June 2023. This is Khawla Youssef, reporting for Bahrain International TV. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've made it to the finish line. A huge thank you to all of our guests for joining us tonight, and another huge thank you to all of you watching us at home. As always, be sure to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below. We love to hear from you. This was Khalid Hidris, and until next time, good night and God bless.